Welcome to Revangelical, Rethinking Christian Living, a podcast that aims to encourage, challenge, and equip Christians in their daily walk with Christ. Join us as we discuss scripture, theology, the issues of the day, and uplifting stories from folks just like you. Here's your host, Danny Forshee. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our Revangelical podcast ministry. My name is Danny Forshee. And I serve as the pastor of Great Hills Baptist Church here in Austin, Texas. Uh, we love our church, love what God is doing here at Great Hills. Also, I'm the president of the Danny Forshee Evangelistic Association. This is my wife, uh, Ashley Forshee, and we welcome you to our podcast ministry today. And again, Ashley, just want to say I love you, dear, and thanks for joining in with us. Well, thank you, dear. I'm glad to be here. Honored to be here, and awesome. I love you too very much. Awesome. We um, talked about last time how um, Ashley, whenever she comes into the studio and does these with me, she always does a great job and and how our viewers love to watch her. And so I said, man, I got to get her back in here more often. And so she just speaks with a lot of clarity and transparency from a spiritual depth with a walk with the Lord. So what we're doing uh, over these um, in this series called Family Goals is we're looking at the family dynamic of marriage and parenting and overcoming a conflict. And so we're looking at a lot of different facets to the family. You know, I'm just thinking now that mm. God's first institution that he created was the marriage family. Mm, that's right. You know, before any business or church or organization, God said, here's man, here's woman. They need to come together. And then God, it was God's idea. Mm. And so marriage and family is his idea. And so we're just delighted to be able to share from our heart and from the Word of God just some principles and some truths that might be able to encourage you in your marriage relationship or as you raise your children, wherever you are in the spectrum of raising kids. It may be you have brand new babies in your house. woo we do. Well, our kids do. <laughs> have those grandbabies. Our youngest just turned eight weeks old, little Riley Kate. Or you may have adolescents, children, preschoolers, teenagers. Um, your kids may be like our kids and married, but you know what? You're, as long as you're on this earth, you're going to be their parents. And so we mm. look forward to sharing some, some thoughts about parenting here in the next couple of weeks. But again, thank you for tuning us in. And today's episode is called Be Positive. Mm. And so I, I just think... That's what we need. We need some mm. positivity because we have so much negativity and so much discouragement and difficulty in our culture, in our world. There's so many things that are happening. Still, people are very sick with the coronavirus, uh, economic hardships, societal unrest, uh, racial tension and, and racism. I mean, just so many things that are difficult in our world today. And so we thought, why, mm -hmm. why can't we just come along and offer some words of encouragement and be positive? And family goals just has to do with the most important relationships mm -hmm. that we have. Number one, with Jesus. Number mm -hmm. two, with our spouse. And then with our families, children, extended families. And so being positive. Ashley, you are one of the most positive people uh, <laughs> that I have ever met. For my wife, that glass Look, it is nowhere near half empty. It's not really even half full. It's almost to the rim full. I mean, she really is very positive, <laughs> and I and I appreciate that about her. I mean, with <laughs> any time of the day, the night, she still has this positive uh, energy, positive uh, vibe about her, and I really do appreciate it. Not that I'm negative, but I'm the more introspective of the mm. two, the more contemplative, and I can be bent a little toward negativity mm. a little bit, <clears throat> but she's helped me. She's influenced me greatly. So I thought, you know, as we begin the episode today, mm. just ask Ashley about, you know, how did you become so positive and just talk about living with a positive, optimistic mm. outlook in general and then in family dynamics in specific? All right. You know, first of all, I just, um, you know, I think for me, I'll start off by saying, you know, I became a Christian when I was 10 years old. And I, I think, you know, even just that aspect of knowing Jesus at such a young age, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I know just how I was protected and, you know, and it it was real to me, even though I was only 10, you know, it was it still, it was very real. And so with that, I think, you know, it just um, through my life, it's just given me a peace that, okay, 
I can make it. You know, I um, God is with me, mm-hmm. and God is for me. He's not against me. And, um, you know, was thankful and very fortunate, you know, to have a great church, that I, you know, mm-hmm. and, and youth group, and have all that positivity, which was, it was. It was very positive, mm-hmm. you know, doesn't mean that, you know, doesn't mean everything was perfect, and it, whether church or at school or whatever, because I was a teenager, you know, you just deal with teenage things. Yeah. But, you know, I just think that was a big part of it. First Baptist Church of Gulf yes, Shores, Alabama. Yes, First Baptist Alabama. Church of Gulf Shores, That's Alabama. The and we got about. married, yes, Absolutely. and we ended up getting married there. Sure and did. so, you know, and then also, um, and then, like I said, again, that just means— so much, and I do think that really just impacted you know my life, and I'm thankful because it was at such a young age. And I know not everybody has that story, but I do, and I do know that affected me. Yeah. And then the other part I would just say is my um, my my parents, our family, is that I mean my my mom and dad were very encouraging to us as children, and um, you know we know we knew we were loved, and you yeah. know they they were very much about encouraging other people as well and they were That's very true. thoughtful my my dad was a was a salesman and so yeah. and we had a furniture and he loved people you know and and he showed that to us as kids and just my dad loved to have fun yeah, my yeah. parents you know growing up we would go and we had a lot of fun together growing up um you know vacations and you know mm-hmm. just in general we lived down the coast of Alabama and so mm-hmm. we would uh, and that mean you had to always go off somewhere to vacation you know we just would yeah. have fun time with families and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, I mean, we all have things we struggle with, but that was one thing. I I mean, those two things, definitely knowing the Lord Mm -hmm. and then also just, um, you know, having that foundation. And so, you know, it, and I think, you know, with that, we brought that, I think, into our, to our life and to our marriage and what was, you know, is very important to to be positive, to be encouraging. Because also I do know with Danny, I mean, he has a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with that, I think um, I always just and I always just wanted to provide a safe place for Danny to mm-hmm. come home to at the end of the day and to be to be positive and encouraging. It sounds like uh, Caleb. Hey, be yeah. positive. We're doing a shout out to Caleb. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's just, but I think that's so important. And, you know, one of the, and again, you know, as you just learn more about what, what God's Word said and what Scripture says, and I, I really do always go back to, this is the verse that I, you know, try to encourage my own self and encourage others. Because even though I say, you know, I do know, I mean, again, I know I am, and I'm thankful that mm-hmm. you know God has made me all you know to um, to to be joyful. Mm-hmm. But I also, I mean, there's certainly been times in my life when I, you know, mm-hmm. you know, wasn't, and that would be because a lot of it was because it was my own doing. And so, but then I had to figure out and you know and redirect my mind and heart to was like, okay, it's time to be positive. But the verses <laughs> that I'm going to say is is, a, and I know a lot of y'all know this is a Philippians four. And it's, um, uh, you know, memorize four, six, and seven, and that's such a great verse. But I always, I like go back to the mm, whole eight, part mm, of it. And even even back at the beginning of verse four, yeah. four. Yeah. And so I'm just, it's okay, yeah, I read, read it. Okay, it, I want to really read, read scripture here. It Come says, on. and this is the NIV version. And it says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say mm. it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The mm. Lord is near. Mm-hmm. And then these are the parts that are like, encourage you as you do become, you know, are just sad or whatever thing you're going through. It's like, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, you're praying, you're asking God. But he says also to be thankful. Yeah. So as you're sometimes when you get really can get negative or, you know, you're just having a hard time. We watched a movie the other day and it was about being thankful and listen yeah. to 10 things that you're thankful for. And it really can help your mind yeah. almost to be like, okay, I'm going to get off of the negativity and right. get more on positive. Amen. Well, the rest of that says, and when you do this, Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which mm-hmm. transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. And then it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, mm-hmm. whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, mm-hmm. whatever is admirable, if anything of excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And whatever you have learned, mm-hmm. received, or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice, and the peace of God, or the God of peace, will be with you. Amen. And so I just, you know, I love that scripture because I think it's mm-hmm. like it's it puts it you need to be joyful. It doesn't mean your life's going to be perfect. It doesn't mean every mm-hmm. day is just, you know, like I said it's perfect, but it's like it gives you something mm-hmm. to hang on to and, to, yeah. and and gives you something very applicable that you can do in your life. And so anyway, right. 
very thankful. Thank so. you. So that's really good. The, your background, your yeah. um, being raised, uh, you know, accepting Christ, being in a home uh, mm-hmm. that you were affirmed and encouraged, yeah. having a church, a youth ministry yes, that affirmed exactly. you. And you're talking about your mom and dad. I just love your parents. Uh, They're just wonderful you. people. Big Mike, he went to be with the Lord in 2005. I know, like 15, 16. Years maybe, ago, yeah. Maybe 16 years, I guess, in He March was second. quite an individual. He's about 6'2", mm. two, 250 <laughs> pounds. He was a big man, big smile, mm. and loved life and loved to have a good time yeah. and instilled that in you guys. Yeah. And y'all like to have, we have do. fun. And Evelyn, your your mom, love yeah. Miss Evelyn. She remarried to Larry Bowman. We love Larry. Yeah. He's become just a big part of our family yeah. as well. He also likes to have a good time. Yes, he does. Now, he and I like to play golf <laughs> and just eat seafood. Yeah. Come on. Well, uh, we're talking about being positive today right. and how That's it impacts right. our lives and our mm. individual walk with the Lord. Ash is talking about the Word of God and how powerful that is and prayer mm. and meditation and all those things just help fuel our uh, our joy. I think about the fruit of the Spirit, love, uh, joy. You know, mm. love, joy, and peace. Last time we, we talked about in our marriage relationships, how vital it is for both the husband and wife to be pursuing Christ. Remember the triangle? And as a result, uh, a beautiful thing happens as we pursue Christ, husband up the side of the triangle, wife on this side. We get closer to one another uh, as we get closer uh, to the Lord. So today, um, I want to uh, look at some positive, practical ways we can thrive and succeed in our marriages. How's that sound? This may be broadcast, uh, published right around Valentine's, which I think is really cool. So positive pointer, I only got two of these, but this is what we want to share with you. Number one, look for the best and not for the worst in each other. Mm. Look for the best. You know, it's very easy to become frustrated and harp on and constantly criticize one another for uh, what the other person does that irks you or that (laughs) their idiosyncrasies uh, or their eccentricities or whatever it is that they do that. And, you know, we can focus on that or we can overlook that and forgive and and, and move on. Mm. And if you're doing something that is, you know, damaging to your marriage, you, you can't say, well, that's just who I am. I can't change that. But yes, you can change that. And we should work toward um, changing and being the best person we can be for Christ uh, and for one another. Uh, this pointing out uh, the positive in others, it's so biblical and it's extremely beneficial in marriages. Now think about it like this, be very practical. What if you just focused on uh, the positive on, you know, I just want to affirm you, Ash. I just want to thank God for you. And like I said, we all have our ways and just, but if we just, camp out on that, mm. then that's going to lead to disaster. That's going to lead yeah. to the big D, right? It's going to lead to divorce. If all we are just consumed with negativity and what the person does wrong, the way they squeeze the toothpaste or do the <laughs> toilet paper or whatever, you know, just don't focus on that. Yeah. Um, but it's just a tangible way we can, um, you know, we can just we can just affirm one another. And, you know, the Word of God talks about mm. this constantly. I was reading a tweet by my friend, Michael Catt. He's a pastor uh, out at uh, Sherwood Church there in Georgia. And he had a, a post on Twitter the other day, and he just had all these Bible verses that said the same thing. Mm. It said, love one another. And I was just mesmerized by this because mm. he captured, there's like 10 each time it says, love one another, agape one another, look for the best in one another, be mm. willing to sacrifice for one another. Now, the context could be, is most of the time it's it's the um, relationships that we have with the body of Christ. But does that not apply to our relationship with our spouses? Mm-hmm. John 13, 34, love one another. John 13, 35, love one another. John 15, 12, love one another. John 15, 17, love one another. Romans 12, 10, love one another. 1 Thessalonians 3, 12, will love one another. 1 Peter 1, 22, love one another, and I could go on and on and on. Isn't that cool? And that's what God calls us to do. A couple of verses that came to my mind just for us husbands that will help us stay positive and focus on the good traits and qualities of our of our wives and to not compare her to somebody else 
or not say, well, you just didn't measure up in this or that. But think about this verse, Proverbs 31, 27 through 31 says, her children rise up and they call her blessed. Mm. Her husband also, and he praises her. Mm. <laughs> That's a great verse. Mm. Now, being a person of affirmation, words of affirmation, you can see why that would mean a lot to me. Yeah. And by the way, everybody appreciates being appreciated. Mm. <clears throat> Nobody, you, you give them a compliment, I don't want to hear that. I'm, I'm not all that. I don't want to hear that. Mm. No, we all, our, all of us have a little bit of a love language in that area of positive affirmation. Her husband, he, he rises up and he calls her blessed and he praises her. And this is how he praises her. Listen, isn't this eloquent? Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Wow. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Wow. Isn't that powerful? Mm. All right, what about wives? What are some verses that, that come to mind that that would encourage them to be affirmative to their husband. Well, here's one, Ephesians 5, 33. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Mm. I've said this before, dear, and I'll say it again. You know, the Bible's just amazing. Mm. Ephesians 5, 33, what I just read. When I know you respect me mm -hmm. and you believe in me, I think I can do anything. I really do. It gives me so much confidence. And of course, I find that in the Lord, He speaks blessings over me. He loves me and empowers me. But when other people do it, and especially this person, because she's the one that means the most to me in this world besides Jesus, when she does it, wow. By the way, I would recommend Emerson Igerich's book to you. It's called Love and Respect. And it's really fascinating because it takes Half the chap half the book, every chapter is written to me as a husband. Mm. The other half is written to the wife, and it just gives really practical, sometimes funny, and really insightful uh, advice. Okay, so we're going to be real practical here. All right. And Ashley and I are going to put into practice this positivity, this encouraging, this affirmative, joyful. And this is really easy for us because mm -hmm. we do love each other. This is not a show. Um, I, I, you know, early on in our marriage, I was just a knucklehead. I was just, I, I just had to be straightened out and, and God used her to help straighten me out. But through the years, you know, it just gets better. Mm. It gets, it gets easier. I mean, you know, you're committed for life mm -hmm. and you just want to grow closer to Christ and to one another. So we'll put it into practice here. So not just in generalities, but specifically, um, Ashley and I will speak to each other kind of what we what we appreciate about one another. You can go first, then I got some good things I'll share oh, with goodness. you. And hopefully right. this will model yep. for others, for okay. husbands and wives to take this moment and just speak life and be positive to each other. All right, here we go. Okay, these are some things that, uh, first is going to be a little more, I think I'm going to share a little more. Um, so I have no spiritual. idea what she's going to say. <laughs> the okay. next thing will be what I like about him. That's the fun. Okay. That's also fun. So those should be combined. All right, here we go. Most importantly, that he loves Jesus. And or I'm not, I'm going to speak to you. You okay. love Jesus. You. you know what? You you daily try to practice what you preach on Sundays yeah. and you live it out. That is, I mean, how, how can I not respect somebody that does that? Your heart for lost souls. Ever since I've known you, you've had a heart for for people, and you care about. Them. You want them to come to know the Lord. You love you love me, and you yeah. love our kids, and now yeah. our grandkids. Amen. And to Amen. see that sweetness is yeah. just such a special thing to see, and that's something that you've always, you know, mm -hmm. that has always been very much a part of our life. You're very disciplined. You're very genuine, mm -hmm. and you know, it's Thank just you. transparent. I mean, and it's um, it's. And that's what a lot of people know about you, and I appreciate that. Um, I like that you, um, you know, we spend time together. We pray together, yep. you know, like we, and we had shared that in our um, previous podcast, but it's so important, mm -hmm. and you're very intentional. Yeah. So I think that's a really good thing, and that's for a lot of people is to be intentional. Thank and you. it's like, you know, mm -hmm. with me personally and mm -hmm. with sharing and caring for others and you and like I said, first praying together and, you know, you want to set a, a good example. I know um, that's important. I know, you know, I think we were talking about, you know, just read in Hebrews and, and I think it was in chapter six where it talks about how we're supposed to be a good example for mm -hmm. other people, yeah. you know, and so, so that other people would, 
And of course, we're being a good example because we're following Jesus. Yeah. And that is who your ultimate example is. But God's called us here on this earth to be a good example. And so sure. as we go through that. So those are some of the wonderful things that I love about my husband. Now to tell, and I will, um, I love him and I like him. Amen. I'm and grateful I like for that. that. That's, it's fun Thank because you. I like him. I enjoy mm-hmm. hanging out with him. He's fun. I've always enjoyed from the very first time that, um, well, oh maybe it was the second time. Oh well, boy. the first time, you know, was like I said, we met at the salad bar. I'd shared that before. But then, yeah. you know, we um, he was in the Baptist Studio Union, and just from, they would have fun. You know, like, I mean, we were in college, so, you know, you have fun. So, you know, there were times they were dancing on the table. They were... <laughs> Um, he's got some really good moves too. So, you know, I really like that. Okay, dear. Okay, dear. (laughs) Then it's just fun things, you know, but he's very adventuresome and I've always liked that from, and discipline. Oh, I forgot about that. That's one of the most, and I appreciate that. He's very goal oriented to where he like, decided, what, five or six years ago, he was going to do an Ironman triathlon. He did what it took to get there, and he did that two years ago. I mean, that is something, I mean, that's an incredible goal that he set for him, and he did it. And so anything from, like, he's also did those, what, fun mutter things with uh, Bryant. Tough mutter. with Bryant and Layton. And though they went, and I mean, it was an obstacle course. Oh, yeah. I mean, God. Filthy, dirty, but they just love spending time. And that's it, spending time together. And so, and then the other things, as I would just say, is like, he's a helper. And he helps me at home, and I really appreciate that. And so I would say that sometimes the thing that, you know, you probably know where I'm going. When he's the most handsome to me. Oh, my word. Is when he helps and he washes dishes. And he's a great dishwasher. Come on. Come on. But that's, you know, as a woman, we have lots of things we're doing. And just to know that he would take that time and yeah. do that for me, it just is, um, and again, it just, uh, yeah, I just really appreciate it. I love my husband, and I really like him, too. That's so. awesome. Thank you, dear. <laughs> I appreciate that. And I mm. want to reciprocate and just speak words of truth mm. and life to you because, uh, you know, like you said, I love you, but also like you. I enjoy mm. hanging mm. out with you. And I've said this before, and I may even get emotional saying it again, but mm. she is, mm. she's the. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I love you, dear. <laughs> mm. Appreciate you. Thank you. Mm. Ash is the best person I've ever mm. met. Mm. That's just the truth. Um, and I met a lot of people. Some people say, well, you ain't met many people. No, no, no. <laughs> I've met a lot of people, but she is. Mm. She's the best person, most genuine, compassionate, caring, selfless uh, person that I've ever met. Of course, when we were 18 and 19 years of age, <laughs> you know, and I was dating her. I just thought, you know, and I still do. Well, she is so pretty. You know, that's mm-hmm. what attracted me, you know, initially, guys just being real. Mm. But oh my word, had no idea just what was underneath and what kind of person she was until, you know, we started dating and and getting married, having our lives together and our kids and all. And phenomenal wife, amazing, um, amazing mother. And I know our kids would absolutely aff- affirm what I'm saying. And those grandkids absolutely <laughs> adore Nay Nay. I tell you, Claire sees Ashley coming and she goes ballistic because mm-hmm. she absolutely loves her. And Ashley's very uh, genuine. Like I said earlier, very, very positive, dear. I appreciate that, that you're so positive in the half uh, full glass. Thank you that the way you uh, you love people, you believe in, uh, you believe the best of people. Mm-hmm. Ashley's a great counselor. She was getting that sociology major for a reason because she enjoys counseling. She enjoys listening to people and uh, and people enjoy listening to her and her and her wisdom. So um, I love you, dear. I, I just appreciate you very much. And uh, and so we we share this with each other. This is not fake or, you know, this is just who we are. And we yeah. are trying to do this too as maybe exemplary for you guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, some of you ladies or men, words may not come as easy. And so maybe you have to write it out. But I encourage people to mm-hmm. do that. Just take a few minutes and just speak life and affirmation to one. Just think if we were to do that mm. more often and how much more solid and healthy, uh, you know, our relationships would be. So we're talking about being positive mm-hmm. and uh, and speaking, speaking death and life are in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, mm-hmm. 21. And he who loves it will eat its fruit. And so I, I love that verse. There's one more positive mm-hmm. pointer we want to share with people. Uh, and that is this, have fun. Mm-hmm. And that's just so important. Uh, take take the time uh, to, um, to to go do things with one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's all kinds of um, 
you know, all kinds of pressures, all kinds of things that we we know we have to get done. But I'm a big proponent of taking breaks and investing in each other, miniature. You know, you can do this each night, just kind of un, unwind and just talk to one another. But Ashley, and I love this about her too, is she she's not afraid to have a good time. I mean, she will like, I remember last, uh, well, a couple of years ago, we were um, in August of 2019. I'd gotten really dehydrated and I was just going really, really hard and I didn't know what was happening to me. I thought I was having some kind of heart issue or whatever, went to the doctor, everything was fine. I was on the brink of having a panic attack and mm. we were walking <laughs> Oh, We're walking true, around yeah. the neighborhood, and, and Astrid said, We're taking a trip. And she planned this amazing trip to California. And I was like, Yay, let's go. <laughs> and so we did for five or six days, and we had a blast. Mm-hmm. Yosemite went to the Los Angeles oh, Dodgers. Lo and oh, behold, yeah. they win the World Series last yeah. year. And so, um, I don't know, just, just encourage yeah. you uh, to stay in positive and uh, not looking at the worst of, of mm-hmm. one another. And then, number two, um, Take some time to have some fun. Anything you yeah. want to say about that? You know, one of the things, I, I mean, just in talking about being positive and mm-hmm. encouraging it and um, just in general as a person and then also yeah. is like, you know, because the world just, there's so much negativity. I so I would just encourage you, and I, it's turn off the TV. Quit watching yeah. Facebook, Twitter, yeah. whatever, all the other ones. It's, if it's so much negativity is like, I mean, I, absolutely, mm-hmm. I want to know what's going on in the world. But I don't want to be so overwhelmed and focused with because if you focus on it, it can't be very, it can't be yeah. depressing. So put in positive things, put in positive, mm-hmm. and then, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't know, I just feel like I just want me to say that is be careful what all you spend your time watching and yeah. listening, you know, does affect. It does affect how you feel yeah. and, um, you know, being positive, but also just so important just in your marriage relationships is just um, to be encouraging. To remember, this is the person you chose mm-hmm. to spend the rest of your life with. And so, you know, some days are better than others. It's just real life. Let's be real, <laughs> you know? But I mean, it's like, Man, you know something else I enjoy? What's we that? like to walk. We do. We yeah. go on walks yeah. together. In fact, when this episode is over, <laughs> we walked yesterday for yes. a couple of miles. Uh-huh. And Layton, our son, yeah. y'all are going to go walk. I'm going to go to yeah. the gym. And that's another thing, too. Yeah. It's important to have your own life, that's to true. have your own exactly. passions and pursuits and do things that you enjoy. But you got to do those together as well. Right. So have your individual time, then your joint time. But that is that is something mm. I just love about Asha. She does like to have a good time, and we should have we'll do walks together, vacations, Christmases, celebrations, birthdays. Have fun right. along the way. That's right. It'll add years to your life, life to your years. It'll <laughs> it'll bless you. Well, time's about up, dear. Oh, yeah. It goes fast. I hope <laughs> folks are blessed by it and encouraged um, through these um, mm. through this series called. Um, family goals, and we've looked at uh, today at the marriage relationship mm-hmm. and how important it is to be positive. Last time we looked at the triangle, pursuing Jesus, mm-hmm. and so be sure and tune in next time, next week, as Ashley and I will talk about conflict mm-hmm. and how we deal with it uh, in our own family. And we may even broach the, the touchy subjects about what every couple fights about, and that's sex and money, right? So we may have to talk a little bit about that and just offer some encouragement to folks because, look, we're just trying to be real because right. we know marriages are under attack. We know the devil hates Jesus. He hates mm. the church, and he hates your marriage. So we want to do everything we can to come alongside you and build you up. Speaking of coming alongside you and helping and building you up, I want to uh, offer you uh, our seven-part series called Explore God. Mm. Very excited that we're getting to offer this to to you. The resource guides you through some of the most common questions that people ask about God, and it makes a great gift for someone you know who isn't yet a believer in Christ, not yet. And so maybe you can Mm. uh, get this series, give it to them, and just um, as it's me teaching on some of the tough topics, some hard questions that we all ask uh, about, does God exist? Why is there so much pain and suffering? Mm. Is the Bible really the Word of God? Is Jesus really the only way to heaven? So we talk about those, and you can go to dfea.com and check it out. And thank you again so much for listening. I always love to pray, so I'm going to pray a blessing over you. And so let's pray together. Father, thank you for our time together. Thank you for each couple that has been listening. Mm, Thank you, Lord, for each uh, individual. And I just pray blessings upon them. I pray for those that are 
that are dating. I pray for those, Lord, that are looking and, and just open to your will in their life. Would you guide them and bless them? Bless married couples. Bless those with children. And Lord, we do pray that they would be positive to one another and they would speak words of life and blessing. And Lord, they would uh, enjoy times of just fun. And, and life is hard, Lord. And just help us to take time off and enjoy this life that you've given us. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to Revangelical. We hope today's episode has edified and enhanced your walk with God. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next week.